Hi, my name is Vince Piazza. I'm a social security disability lawyer from Baltimore, Maryland. And today what I'd like to discuss with you is step one is sequential evaluation, which is whether or not someone's engaging in what's called substantial gainful activity. Now, the definition of disability is an inability to engage in any substantial gainful activity by reason of any medically determinable physical or mental impairment, which can be expected to result in death, which has lasted or can be expected to last for a continuous period of not less than 12 months. So the concept of substantial gainful activity is actually written into the definition of disability. Now, substantial gainful activity is any work for pay or profit. That does not include hobbies or activities of daily living. Now, the current indexed amount is approximately $1,180 per month. So as a general rule, anyone working and making excess of $1,180 per month is deemed to be able to work and therefore their claim must be denied. Now, substantial gainful activity does not include unsuccessful work attempts. So even though individuals may have made in excess of $1,180 per month, but they haven't been able to keep it up for three consecutive months, Social Security will not deny the claim at step one of sequential evaluation, treat the work activity as an unsuccessful work attempt. In essence, if someone tries to work and they fall on their nose, Social Security won't hold it against them as long as they've done it for less than three months. On the other hand, individuals who have made in excess of $1,180 per month for six months are automatically deemed to be engaging in SGA, and therefore their claim must be denied at step one. That's considered to be a successful work attempt. Individuals making in excess of $1,180 per month for greater than three months but less than six months fall within the discretion of a particular administrative law judge. Now, substantial gainful activity does not include sheltered workshops. Sheltered workshops are institutions which are designed to rehabilitate the disabled. Most notable, Goodwill Industries. Now, this is not considered to be competitive work since the individual is not subject to the same kind of productivity and accuracy requirements as most regular employees. Moreover, they're not subject to the same kind of attendance requirements as normal employees. And many uh, individuals require enormous support systems just to get them to work and get them through work uh, a normal eight hour kind of work day. Hence, sheltered workshops are exceptions to the normal SGA rules. Self-employment income is also an exception to the $1,180 per month indexed SGA rule. Now, Social Security has to take a much closer look at the activity in that, in terms of self-employment income, it's a facts and circumstance analysis. For instance, someone who's working, let's say, 80 hours a week, but is actually generating a net loss, would still be considered to be engaging in SGA based purely on the activity level alone, 80 hours a week, and not based on the net profit actually derived. So most of the information Social Security gets about uh, self-employment income uh, is, comes directly from the IRS filings. So self-employment income requires a facts and circumstance analysis. Likewise, part-time work activity is also difficult to evaluate in assessing whether or not someone's engaging in substantial gainful activity. Again, Social Security must take a much closer look at the activity it, itself. That's a facts and circumstance analysis why is someone only working, let's say, 10 hours a week? Is that all that's actually being offered to the individual? Does the individual have other personal commitments like child care responsibilities that preclude additional work activity? How would one's physical or mental impairment actually be impacted if the part-time activity were increased? Would they decompensate? Would they become hostile, et cetera? Since most part-time work activity is less than $1,180 per month, an administrative law judge generally will not use part-time work activity as a basis to deny the claim at step one of sequential evaluation, but it does require a specific facts and circumstance analysis. In short, that's substantial gainful activity, give to nuts. Thank you for your time and attention.